Monterey Jazz Festival is the longest continuously running jazz festival in the world, and this year it is celebrating its 65th anniversary. Yeah, the event has been held every year at the Monterey County Fairgrounds. Joining us now to talk more about the history of the jazz festival and this year's celebration, artistic director Tim Jackson. Thank you for your time today. So. Yeah, glad you could be with us. So you, I understand, have been with the festival for several decades. So you've seen a lot of music over the years. What are you most excited about for this year's celebration? You know, every year is a little different at the Monterey Jazz Festival. It's it's different, but kind of kind of the same because it, it, it's a, a different mix each year of, of incredible artists, both veteran jazz artists and a lot of new artists. One of the things I always look forward to is we do a commission piece every year where we uh, commission uh, a jazz musician to write and premiere a new piece. And this year we have a great young pianist who came through our high school education program, named, uh, a gentleman named Chris Bowers, who's uh, well known as a jazz pianist, but also as a film composer. He um, uh, wrote the music uh, to Bridgerton and The Green Book. Wow. And we have commissioned a Chris to write a piece for the commemoration of the 30th anniversary of the uh, Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary. So um, it, it's a great way to kind of tie the Monterey Bay, uh, you know, the beautiful area that we are, the um, and the environment and the ocean in with jazz. And Chris, being a, a West Coast guy from Southern California, uh, totally got behind this concept, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, a fantastic piece of music. I think the the fun thing about this jazz festival in particular is that you have had some, well, the biggest names. <laughs> not only in jazz, but just in music, who have appeared. Uh, we're talking about Louis Armstrong, Billy Holiday, Dave Brubeck, Tony Bennett, Miles Davis, uh, up to Herbie Hancock, uh, uh, Wynton Marsalis, so many. And what is the attraction that draws those big names to go to Monterey, aside from the fact that you're in Monterey? <laughs> Well, that does play a part. Uh, I, I think it's the history and legacy of the festival. Uh, as you mentioned uh, up front, it's the world's uh, longest continuously running festival. I, I would say along with the Newport Jazz Festival uh, on the East Coast, you know, we're kind of the, the two preeminent um, outdoor jazz festivals uh, in this country. And we stayed very true to uh, to our roots in jazz music. And in addition to that, as a 501c3 nonprofit organization, we also are deeply involved in jazz education. So when people come to the festival, they're also seeing what the next generation of jazz artists is going to look like. So you've got Greg Reporter, uh, Incognito, name of some of the other stars that are coming this year. We've got um, Brad Meldow, we've got Joshua Redman, we've got Christian McBride, Kurt Elling, uh, Dee Dee Bridgewater. Oh, I Veronica love Dee Dee Bridgewater. <laughs> all sorts of, I mean, we, we, we could go, uh, we could take the whole time just naming off these incredible artists. And I, th I think what's great about Monterey is that, it, you know, we really take the festive part of festival seriously. It's a lot, the music is, is serious, but we, we, we all have a lot of fun in doing it. Um, you're on the Monterey Fairgrounds. Um, it's a beautiful spot, lots of green, lots of grass, lots of oak trees, um, great food, uh, great beverages, and it's kind of a little jazz uh, oasis for the, you know this last weekend in September and it um, it's been that way for uh, 65 years now and I think people really look forward to that tradition we just showed a, a picture of Janis Joplin who of course uh, basically her career was launched by being on that stage in Monterey but clear up a little bit of the confusion because that was the Monterey Pop Festival on the same stage where the Jazz Festival is but you said that Janis Joplin came back and actually did play a jazz festival. I guess what I'm getting at is that this is a birthplace for stars because of the audience. And when somebody really breaks through at that festival, they really break through industry wide, don't they? Yeah, you know, it's an interesting you bring that up because in 1966, the year before the Monterey Pop Festival, the Jazz Festival presented both the Jefferson Airplane and the Paul Butterfield Blues Band, too. Mm -hmm groups very prominent in the in the San Francisco scene uh, in those days and the producers of the Monterey Pop Festival you know were aware of that and saw that and realized that if they did a full-on pop festival 
um, it would create a whole new, um, you know, a whole new group of people would want to come out and see it, and hence the one year of the Monterey uh, Pop Festival in 1967. We also presented um, Sly and the Family Stone in 1969. So we, we presented a lot of crossover music over the years, going up to just a couple years ago when we presented Common and The Roots. Hmm. So because we're running out of town, a time, and I do want to ask you, a lot of people ask questions about the future of jazz, but you have a lot of programs for young jazz musicians. Absolutely. We've been committed to jazz education for decades. Uh, we have our Next Generation Jazz Orchestra, which is our national high school all-star band. Uh, case in point, uh, Chris Bowers, our commission artist this year, came through our Next Generation Jazz Orchestra. And a lot of the musicians that are playing on the stages this year uh, came up through our programs and a lot of other great programs that are that are throughout the country. So. Good. You know, I've heard that, you know, for decades that, you know, jazz is dying, but I can assure you it is not. It, it's alive <laughs> and all And uh, all right. it's happening the fourth weekend of September. <laughs> all right, September 23rd through the 25th. You can get uh, go on your website to get tickets for three days at the Monterey Jazz Festival. Thank you so much. Tim Jackson, Artistic Director.